Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Modern JavaScript for LWC development. In this video, I'll show you how you can use the modern JavaScript function with better parameter handling. Okay, so for this also, I'll be using the same playground. So for that, let's quickly go to playcode.io. Okay, now let's try to understand the basic the standard way of javascript functions and parameter handling by an example so you're probably familiar with defining function like this so let's suppose if i'm doing like result and in a function if i'm having two parameters okay and it could return a plus B so this is basically the standard way of creating a function and to use this function you can simply do it like console.log then we'll call result and we'll pass two parameters so let's suppose for example I'm passing 5 and 10 so in the output window in the console you can see the output is 15 so this is basically the standard way of doing it okay now let me show you the modern way which you should know like if you are working in LLC or if you are working on some latest technology so ES6 introduced a shorter way to define function using what is called uh, arrow functions you must have heard about fat arrow symbol so you can now create the same function using the code like this so I'll be creating same function. So let's take result again. But this time we'll be using the fat arrows. Okay, so this is the fat arrow symbol. And as a result, we will return A plus B. Okay, now let's try to uh, print the result again console.log result and I'm having same parameters here as well so if you'll notice we have created similar functionality using this standard way and this modern way as well but using this modern way if you will notice we are saving few line of code as well all we have done here is remove the function and return keyword and use the new fat arrow symbol instead the parameters are even optional when the, when there is only one parameter and you need the curly braces when you have more than uh, one expression so you just have to take care of curly braces like if you are having curly braces then the return keyword will be required here you can also have the same curly braces but in that case you have to use the return keyword so basically using arrow functions you can have less code and remove some of the confusion while dealing with this keyword so while working in IWC, you must have used this keyword to refer to the local parameters, local function. But thing is, uh, this keyword is having its separate scope, especially when nested functions are involved in a functionality or in a code block. So functions are having a special variable called this, or you can also refer it as dynamic this, I would say. The dynamic this will be having its functional scope. But if the function is having some nested functionality, so it is not going to work with the traditional way. Okay, now let me show you another example where we are having some issues with this keyword, which is using this keyword, okay? And there, there is also a workaround of it. I'll show you that as well, okay? So first, let's try to create uh, this keyword issue example, okay? So here I'm creating a literal users, okay. And let's have some parameter now. So the first parameter I'm using welcome. And my second parameter is going to be an array which will be having user's name 
so next step was John and Ray. Okay, now my third parameter will be having a function. So welcome message and I will create a function here. Okay, so this is my third attribute or parameter in this literal. Now in this literal guys, I can uh, I can create loop of, of the users I'm having here. So for that I can do like this dot user. So if you'll notice here, I'm, I'm referring this user using the this keyword. Okay, and then let's create a for each loop. Okay, so till here also it is absolutely fine, but now Now here I'm using it as a nested functionality as well, okay And now here if I will print it like this So if I will use this dot welcome this parameter, add a blank space and user name. Okay. So here for this user, I have used this dot user, and the same way for this welcome also, I have used this dot welcome so technically it should work right but it is not going to work let me show you by calling this function okay so let's call this functions user dot welcome message user sort so you can see the welcome message here it says undefined john and undefined gray so basically we are getting the values inside this for each loop uh, for this user record, but we are not getting values for this dot welcome. So what is happening here guys? So this keyword will always have its functional scope. So for this first function, this keyword is having its scope and that's why we are able to get the values using this keyword. But for the nested one, the this keyword is losing its scope i would say so for the nested functionality you won't be able to use the this keyword okay so for that also we are having a workaround i would say so for that workaround what we can do is let me just keep this code aside and use it here again okay so workaround for this could be that you add a new variable inside the for in, inside the function where this keyword is having its scope and assign that this keyword to that variable and then you can use that variable instead of this keyword inside the nested functionality okay so for example let's take the same thing so let's define a, this here so let's suppose i'm having a little here which says self and I'm assigning this to the self. So basically the scope of this keyword, the self will be having it, okay? Now instead of this dot welcome, you can have self dot welcome. So if you use self dot welcome, so you'll be having like message welcome John and welcome this. So this self is basically having the same scope what this was having inside the functional scope, but the self is having the same scope in the nested functionality as well. Okay, but this is just a workaround. So uh, for for the best practice, you should use the arrow function uh, from ES6, which will be having the nested scope as well. Okay, that means by using the arrow function, we can get rid of this problem without any workaround. So this was the function. This was the example uh, with the workaround. This is the standard way through which we are not able to get the value of that this keyword scope of that this keyword and using the workaround we are able to do that 
but as per the best practice as per the modern javascript functionality we should use fat arrows for the same okay so let's suppose if i would like to use fat arrow functionality then using the same example we will be trying this okay so for that let me remove it first this is my function and here in this for each loop instead of this function what i can do is uh, let me remove it first so this is my for each loop and in this for each loop i can have a fat arrow symbol okay and in this fat arrow if i will use this dot falcom yep now you can see the output like without that workaround uh, we have used the this keyword in a nested functionality as well and it is working as expected so this is the official uh, way of doing this this keyword or managing this this problem sorry if i'm saying this too much <laughs> okay so this is the basically the best practice to avoid uh, avoid this situation okay now let's talk about the better parameter handling prior to es6 parameter handling in function was i would say tedious to ensure that your code ran as expected you often had to add a manual check within the function or any optional parameter for example let me quickly build a code block so let's suppose function hello world and here i'm having two parameters okay so let's suppose if we are calling this function so to make sure uh, to run this function as expected you have to make sure like user is passing two parameters in this function so for that for the second parameter you have to add a check let's suppose like for this p2 i'm adding a check if it is empty then add world here and then return p1 and p2 okay now let's try to call this function hello world now let's suppose if i'm passing two parameters here So if I'm passing two parameters here, you will be able to see the output as like parameter one plus parameter two. Okay. But what if I missed the second parameter? So in that case, it is going to take the default parameter from here. So to do the better parameter handling, you have to use the default value in your function as well. Okay. So this was the standard way of handling it. But after ES6, this has been changed completely. In the modern JavaScript, you don't have to do it like this way in modern javascript what you can do is let me just copy same code here as well so while uh, declaring the parameter in the function you can have its default value so i'm having it here and i will remove this line from here and you can see the output and this is all this is only going to work like if this parameter is not having its value so it, in that case it is going to take the default thing but if it is having the value so in that case it is going to always you know take the value and display the result accordingly so this is a better way to handle the parameter you can also like uh, assign default value in the first one or like it is completely up to your requirement so in this modern javascript you don't need that extra line of code inside that function okay so that's it for today guys i hope you uh, you understand uh, now like why you should use the modern javascript function and why it will help you to develop a clean code i would say so that's it for today guys if you need to complete code you can go to my blog which is salesforcecode.com and get it from there as well and if you like today's video, subscribe to the channel will be awesome. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.